today's video I'm hiking up to the Hollywood sign to tell the story of Pat Gantwistle, the actress who took her own life by jumping off the H of the Hollywood sign. I'm just making my way up to the sign right now. It's a Sunday morning, so there's quite a few people about. Peg's life started 5,000 miles away in the town of Potalpot in Wales. She was born in Broad Street at number 5. She was born Millicent Lillian Entwistle on February the 5th, 1908. Although Welsh-born, her parents were English. They had come to Broad Street for the birth as they had a relative in the street who was a midwife. By 1913, Peg's parents had divorced and Peg, her father and her two half-brothers had settled in America. Peg's father died in New York City in 1922, the victim of a hit-and-run driver. Just talked to a guy who was running up to the sign. Obviously a local, and he was saying that, um, well, I asked him actually if he'd seen any rattlesnakes. And he's seen uh, a few so far this season, but it's a bit early at the moment. Now people tend to assume that Pat Sentwistle was somehow a failed actress and not very talented. But this wasn't the case at all. She was in eight consecutive Broadway shows by 1931. And one of her performances would inspire the future acting legend Betty Davis. In 1925, Betty Davis witnessed Peck playing the part of Hedwig in the play The Wild Duck. Davis herself would later play the same part on Broadway. In interviews and in her biography, Betty Davis would mention that Peck Antwistle was the driving force to her becoming an actress. In 1927, Peg married actor Robert Keith. They divorced in 1929. During this time, she was stepmother to Brian Keith, who would later become a successful Hollywood actor. By 1931, the Great Depression had started, and Broadway plays were closing as soon as they opened. Peg abandoned Broadway and headed for Hollywood, where she hoped to make a film career. In 1932, she landed a big film role in the film 13 Women, However, much of her scenes were cut from the final film. At the time of her death, she was staying at her uncle's house in Hollywood. And on September 16th, 1932, she told her uncle she was going for a walk to a drugstore and then to visit some friends. But she then proceeded to hike up to the Hollywood sign where she found the workman's ladder. She climbed the H letter and jumped to her death. Her body was found by a female hiker on September 18th. The hiker came across a shoe, purse and jacket first. Then she found the suicide note in the purse. When she looked down the mountainside, she saw the body. The coroner concluded that the cause of death was due to multiple pelvis fractures. Peg Antwistle was cremated in Hollywood and her ashes were buried next to her father in Glendale, Ohio. At the time of her death, the sign actually read Hollywood Land. The sign was erected in 1923 to promote her property development. The sign originally had lights around the lettering. The H of the sign was destroyed by wind in 1944. The land was removed from the sign in 1949, leaving the Hollywood sign as it is today. But by the 1970s, the sign had become severely dilapidated and was replaced by the current sign after a campaign by Hugh Hefner Kind of the other side of the mountain now. Uh, the mountain is actually called Mount Lee. I don't think I mentioned it earlier. And what we're looking at now is the San Fernando Valley, known as the Valley locally. Just down here is Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills Cemetery, not to be confused with Forest Lawn Glendale. Oof. 
I took the short route up, but it's still quite a hike. And I actually think I've miscalculated now, I've gone the wrong way. There is a trail here, but it's a bit sketchy. Oh. Okay, there's some people there, so it's not too far. Okay, I'm going to try it. If I hear a rattlesnake, I'm going back. easier to do this if I wasn't filming but if I do fall I want it on film oh, I'm glad I'm wearing jeans and not shorts I don't know how much protection jeans would give you from a rattlesnake but it's probably better than just being bare-legged okay, which way is this go? let's go down now Turned into a bloody climbing video. Exciting, but don't try this at home. I think those, the people I saw earlier on just did the same mistake as me, I think. See them there. So once you get up to there, I think it's like a tarmac road again. Oh, oh God. <sighs> Nearly went on my back. Okay. I think this is probably the final hurdle before I reach the tarmac. You can see me sliding down this. Ooh. Okay, made it to the tarmac. Moderately terrifying. Okay, almost at the summit now. I think it's taken about two hours, I think. And that was going by probably the shortest route. So if you can, make sure you bring water, good shoes and sunscreen. Just know how to push all my buttons